Hey guys, so I wanted to take this opportunity to demo our Pedalboard Planner app. Um, this is an app that I haven't really spent a ton of time on in the past few months. It's I've, I've added some uh, some parts to it and some new pedals and stuff like that, but there's still no back end, uh, which basically just means it's really hard to add parts to this. Uh, we're working on building a back end. It's kind of a slow process, but um, I wanted to start demoing it and I wanted to start showing it off a little bit because I think it's a pretty cool, uh, it's a pretty cool little app. Um, and and basically what it is is we have uh, just just images of the pedals and the pedal boards that are to scale or at least really close. So I actually have a new pedal board uh, that that we picked up off Reverb. It's uh, it's a pedal train and it already had Velcro on it. Already had a power supply that's fixed to the bottom of it. So I wanted to go in here and actually plan uh, plan out this board uh, using our app. So this is the home screen of the app. It's uh, pretty basic. You click the get started button to pull up your menu. And the pedal train board that I have is it's pretty old and I think it's about the size of a classic junior. So the classic junior is <laughs> Uh, it's 18 inches wide and about 12 and a half inches uh, deep or high depending on how you look at that um, but it's a pretty good size and I have a bunch of pedals that I want to put on it so basically th this tool um, it's really simple you know it's nothing fancy but it just lets you plan out your board before you put everything on velcro um, so we'll go ahead and go through here I have maybe eight total pedals that I want to put on it. I have a tuner, the Boss TU2, it's the older one. Uh, and so whenever you whenever you drag a pedal, you just click and you drag, uh, just kind of like I did there with the tuner, and if you drop it onto the board, uh, it'll stick to it. The tool can be a little bit uh, buggy sometimes, like for example, if I pull this uh, pedal over here and I drop it outside the board, it doesn't stick, and um, so sometimes like if you're not exactly Leave, uh, dropping it on the right spot, it'll uh, sometimes it'll stick and sometimes it won't. But um, for the most part, it works pretty well. And then what you'll notice with each of these pedals is it drops this little menu down here. Um, and if you don't want to see that menu, uh, you can just uh, go ahead and hide it, and then that'll leave just the pedal there. Um, so let's go ahead and grab the rest of the effects. Uh, let's see, I have this amp tweaker distortion. Which is a pretty sweet pedal, and we also have um, the line six delay, which takes up a bunch of space. And so real quick, you can see how space on these boards it just gets taken up really fast. Um, like it, it, they they look big when you pull them out of the case, but they're they're pretty they're pretty small. And so what I want to do is just you know get all these pedals on here and then plan out how I want to basically place them and how I'm going to uh, fix them to the board. Um, and, and you can see that in each, um, let's go back to, actually let's grab one of these boss pedals here. I have the newer boss BF3 flanger. And you can see by each one it has the size, so boss pedals are about 2.87 by 5 inches. Uh, and if you, uh, if you double click on one of these, you can turn it sideways, and what we can do is just sort of line these up so I can show you that the scale on this pedal board and the pedals is about right. Like I said, it's not perfect, um, but I think it's really close. So uh, it's 18 inches and 3... Uh, boss pedals that are about five inches high gets you pretty pretty close to what looks like 15 inches worth of this board with a couple inches to spare. Um, so the scale should be pretty much right uh, and then we'll just go ahead and delete all these since they're turned sideways. You can turn them back but it's easier just to drag it on there. And then we'll go ahead and grab the rest of my pedals. So you can see that it's to scale and that we'll be able to just kind of place all our pedals. Um, there are a few other tools out, out there that do this, um, but I, I notice a lot of them don't do great with the scaling, and, and that is definitely tricky. Um, but I, I found that just with uh, 
you know, being careful with how you size the images and um, kind of having a template to work off of, you can get the scale pretty close. So uh, we have the suit. I have the old Super Phaser, the PH2 there. And I also I have the GE70 uh, EQ, but I'm not going to put that on there. Um, let's see. I got the wah pedal already. Um, uh, and I have the TC Electronic uh, Hall of Fame. That's a great pedal. Um, yeah, that's like just a fantastic reverb pedal. And I think this is everything. So I, I can probably start placing them. What what I want to do in in this one, since this is my first video, and a lot of a lot of people um, ask uh, what order you should put your pedals in and what your signal chain should look like. Uh, and the thing that I always refer people to is. Um, this article that someone over at uh, Strymon put together, um, which is just a really fantastic resource for figuring this out. Uh, and, and it's really just because they did a great job with the graphics. So right here you can see um, this, is, this is basically a recommended signal chain without um, an effects loop, and that's how I'm going to do my board. So it, it's it's all pretty uniform. So you have compression and volume, which should always come first. Uh, you have your wah pedal, which would be like any kind of filter or pitch related effects. Uh, and then they have an overdrive pedal here, which would basically, uh, that would mean any kind of gain, any, any distortion or anything that impacts your gain before uh, it's getting to your preamp. Then chorus and tremolo would be indicative of, of modulation effects in general. So modulation being phaser, chorus, or uh, um, flanger, tremolo, those are all modulation effects. And then uh, bringing up the end of the chain is any kind of ambient effects. And, and typically the three ambient effects you'll see are delay, echo, and reverb. Those would all be considered ambient or, uh, or effects that are manipulating time. And those should always come last. So this is just kind of a general suggestion. You know, it's not it's not a hard and fast rule, and there's some debate about this. And and this this uh, uh, particular uh, graphic doesn't address tuners, which um, you know that that doesn't matter quite as much. I'm actually going to put mine. I think I think in this build, I'm going to put it at the end of the signal. Um, ideally, it, I think it would be in front, but just because of the way my board's set up here, it's going to be a little hard to have it at the front. Um, but what this will do is we can just kind of put it together. So since filter effects are uh, supposed to be in the front of the chain, I'll just drop my uh, uh, Morley wah pedal down here. And then this tight metal distortion is kind of my go-to. It's a really small pedal, um, but man, this is... Uh, we, we've written a couple of reviews on this and it's just a fantastic distortion pedal. Um, I, I've really never heard anything that's, that's as good. Uh, the, the, the guy that makes these is, he, he's still, he's still, I think just a few folks that work for him, but he does a great job. Um, so anyway, uh, we'll put that kind of right beside the wah pedal. And then with this tool, you just want to leave a little bit of room for cabling. Um, typically I use the, uh, the right angle, uh, uh, patch cables that are flat on the, it, it's, it's kind of hard to explain without being able to see it, but, um, they're just, they're really uh, good for saving space. And I'll, I'll link to those in the video description. Uh, I'll also link to this tool and, uh, this article so you can get to that. Um, but then what, what I end up doing here is I'm, I'm going to put my, uh, my line six delay, uh, in, in front. And this doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going from my distortion pedal to the delay pedal directly. Uh, cause I still want, I still want this to be at the end of my signal chain. But the reason I'm putting this here is cause it has a tap, tap tempo button. I think it's this one all the way over to the right. And I use that all the time when I'm using this pedal. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to have that up front where I can get to it a little quicker. So that will get us to modulation, which is just going to be my phaser and flanger pedal. And, uh, these will actually, these will actually be wired into the middle, uh, uh, in between the distortion and the, the line sex DL4. So so we'll go ahead and leave the Hall of Fame sitting over there because that's that's going to come after the Line Six. 
Uh, and then I'll let's go ahead and turn my. But actually, I don't, I don't like it. See, this is why I like using this because um, I can I can pick out problems like this before I sit down and actually start wiring up a board. So I'm just going to move everything over a little bit, and I'm going to try to stick my tuner pedal right in there. I'm double clicking the pedal to flip it like that. Um, and you'll notice that in here it, it gets kind of tight. Uh, just being able to fit all these in, it, it's it, like, like I said, if you use those low, I think they're called low profile patch cables. They have a really flat kind of end to them. Um, and those, those would let you uh, get into a space like that. So, uh, so anyway, I'm going to hide some of these menus here so we don't have to look at those little blue lines. Um, but yeah, ba basically you would just have to be conscious of which patch cables you're using and how you would wire that up. So then if, if you want to kind of work with this a little bit more, um, I, I sometimes I like to go in and number uh, which ones are ordered in the effects chain. So my wah pedal is number one, the distortion is number two, and then I'm actually going to, whoops, I'm actually going to come up here. Like I said, with this tool, it, it sometimes has issues with dragging. So if you... You, you're welcome to go and use this. I mean, it's a it's it's a fun tool to play with, um, and but you you just note that that there are still some issues with it that that we're working out and that we're um, like with the dragging there, and sometimes it just doesn't respond super well. But uh, it's it's really simple to use, and you can go to the the URL is right here, and like I said, I'll put a link to that in the description below the video. Um, so then coming out of Let's see where you right. So I was going from distortion. We go from wall and filter effects to distortion to modulation effects, which are the flanger and phaser up here. So that's number three and four. And then we're gonna kind of wire back down to uh, my line six, which is gonna be number five. Uh, and then we're gonna come back up to our last pedal, and uh, which is the ambient reverb there. Uh, and then, and then, which is, uh, I, I kind of ran out of room here on the side, so I, I think the easiest thing to do, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you'll have a better idea, but um, is, is just to kind of run a longer patch cable down underneath uh, this row and get to my tuner, and then just output from the tuner. So that, that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, all, all this does is it, it just kind of lets you play around with your uh, with your board, you know, before you start, you know, actually putting stuff down. And I just find it to be, you know, kind of fun and, and helpful. And, uh, you know, as we, as we develop it and as we add more gear and more functionality to it, hopefully it will be more useful. So what I'll do, uh, is I'll actually put together this board and I'll uh, let you guys take a look at that in the next part of this video. And uh, what you'll find is it'll come out fairly close to what we see here. Like I said, the scale isn't perfect, but it is definitely, uh, it's, it's definitely, I think, closer than a lot of the other tools out there that are similar to this. And there are, there are just a few. Um, I, don't, I don't remember the names of the companies that do them. I think Pedal Train may actually have one. Um, and their scale isn't bad, but there are a few others that the, the scale just isn't quite right. And so this, this should come out pretty close with the actual board. And so I will, uh, um, shut this, uh, screen cap capture off and then I'll put that board together and just film that process and let you guys take a look at that. So, uh, if you guys want to check out the tool, like I said, it's in the, the link is in the description below. Um, and, uh, you know, feel free to <laughs> drop questions uh, in the video here or at the website and, uh, you know, hopefully I'll talk to you guys soon.